Welcome to These Are the Blades of Our Lives, the figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for our mamas. Yes, it is here at last, the Grand Prix, the Senior Grand Prix. Starting this Friday, we kick off at Skate America. And I hope it is everything and more. Yes, guys. Why? Because the ice is slippery, the blades are thin and everything that can happen in figure skating will happen. So I'm going to try to give you guys a prediction for what I think is going to happen at Skate America, but quite frankly, given how disastrous this season has been so far, my prediction is likely wrong, but I'm going to give it to you anyways, starting with pairs. Right off the bat, it went batshit crazy on me. I already had Riku Mura and Ryuchi Kihara as the winner of this event. It was a non-competition. They were just coming to get their name added to their goal. But what happened? Injury. Ryuchi is injured, and so they had to withdraw from Skate America. I'm devastated. After their outing at the Autumn Classic, I really wanted them to come back here to really make a statement as the current reigning world champion. Unfortunately, with this, them not being at Skate America, I don't know if they can get another assignment. So that would mean they are not going to make it to the Grand Prix Final, which really does not bode well for them at Worlds. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is health. So I hope they take all the time they need to come back healthier, which means this pair event is open for the taking. Anyone who wants it can have it. For me, the top three teams here should be um, Annika Hawker and her partner, Robert Canal from Germany. Then we also have the Canadian um, Leah Pereira and Trent Machard from Canada. And then America also has Chessie Liu and Balaz Nagy. Those are, in my opinion, the three top teams who could possibly make the podium or one of them could win gold. However, again, this is one of those, anyone can surprise us and come out on top here. But for me, from what I've seen so far from their experience level, it would have to be one of these three teams. I'm going to give it to Annika Haki and Robert Canal. The last time we saw them was at the Shanghai Trophy, where they were on their way to winning that trophy until the death spiral in the last spin completely took that gold medal from them. I feel like they're going to come here, they're going to be hungry, and they're going to make up for that last event. So I could definitely see them being the winner. If not them, then definitely um, Pereira and Machard. They have, the, they have the jumps, they have the throws, they have the twists. None of it is like, wow, next level, but all of it is really good. So if, any, if, if Annika and Robert falter, then Pereira and Trent can definitely get in there. As for the men, it's not even a competition. Gold is completely Ilya Melanin. We're just talking about like the silver and the bronze medal. So Ilya should definitely win here. Hopefully we'll continue to see more improvement in his skating skill, his performance, his musicality, and his jumps will become more consistent. I'm hoping to see him do another clean short program here to really bring him onto that senior level. As for the rest of it, oh my God, the men are so inconsistent. I'm going to tell you guys what I want to happen and what I think will happen. So what I would like to happen, Ilya Melanin, he's getting the goal. Okay. I would like Shun Soto from Japan to win the silver here. And then I would like Kevin Amos from France to win the bronze. And then the pewter medal, I would like to give to Dennis Vasiliev. But let us be perfectly honest. Kevin and Dennis are so inconsistent. Two of my favorite skaters and two of the most inconsistent skaters out there. What I think is going to happen, and I'm not looking forward to it, but I think it's going to happen. I think Nika Edgaze from Georgia, the E30 40% international hang on her, 
is going to get the bronze here. I think he's going to come here with no skating skills, no program, no musicality, with his bargain basement Moulin Rouge. He's going to rip open his shirt one more time, and he's going to do just enough quad to knock down Kevin and Dennis Vasiliev. I pray to the figure skating gods that Ilya, Shun, Kevin, Dennis, even Andrew Togashev. Andrew, this is your moment, Andrew. I hope they show up. But I feel like Nika Egaze from Georgia with Iteri rubbing his knees in the kiss and cry is going to make off with that bronze medal. I, I, I see it coming because, you know, the Iteri bonus is alive and well. So I, I see him possibly meddling here. But Andrew, Andrew Tugashev, this is your moment. If Kevin and Dennis Vasiliev can't get it together, land enough quad and show us enough skating skill to get the job done. I don't know. I'm leaving it to the gods. And then for the ice dance, again, this is just a question of bronze and silver. Because let me not say that. You know what? Let me not say that. After what happened with um, Fournier and Sorosin, I don't know, guys. I'm just going to say what I would like to see happen because I don't know. Madison Chalk and Evan Bates should easily come in here and win this. Should easily come in here and win this. But again, this season has been very unpredictable. I don't know. I personally would love for my little baby, my Lala couple, Majoli Lajra and Zachary Lagarde to come here. They had such a bad first outing. I want them to go back, twerk, you know, the tw the thriller, because that the outfit is so on point. They they paid really good homage in terms of their outfit. I want them to work the thriller, the thriller, so that it's really good here. And then I already love their long, their free dance. I want them to deliver it cleanly and to the best of their ability. And for them to grab a silver here, I desperately want that for them. I don't know if it's gonna happen. And then um, Natalie Teshlerova and Philippe Teshler. You guys know how much I love this team. How much I felt like they were robbed of their silver medal at their last competition. I First of all, Natalie, for me, is the bomb, okay? She is a healthy, curvy, beautiful goddess who eats that ice when she steps on it. When Natalie steps on that ice, she is here. She is unapologetic. She is skating for all of us and then some. I don't care what anybody else has to say. She is it, her speed, her edge, her control. And then Philippe, he is always there showcasing her. Her, Their lift look effortless while other people are struggling. It's seamless. I don't love their programs. I don't love their programs. I will say it. If they ever get good programs to go with their technical skills, their speed, their spin, their ice presence, I'm willing to give, it, give them all the GOE. I want to see them on that podium. If we cannot see them on that podium, I would also not mind Hannah Lim and Ye Kwan. I love this little couple from South Korea. She, again, Hannah is everything. She's all about this. The position, the extension, the face. Hannah is giving us face for days. She is eating up the ice. When you lift her up in the air, she's like, yes, she's living for this. And again, Quan is always there supporting the strong, silent partner. If I cannot get those three on the podium, then I will be equally as happy with Hannah and Yi on the podium. As for the rest of my top eight, I would love for Olivia Smart and Tim Dykes to have a good outing here. This is a brand new pairing. I'm not looking at what they're going to do this year, what they're going to do next year. I'm looking to see how they're building towards 2026. We're really looking to see what they're going to do when they get to Milan. That's really what I'm looking for this pair. I don't expect them to like win competitions or get on podiums this season, but I want to see gradual improvement and building for them. So I'm putting them on my top six. Um, then Yevgenia Loropova and Jeffrey Bassard. 
a very serviceable team. They don't speak to me yet necessarily, but they're a very serviceable team. Then we have Caroline Green and Michael Parson. This was a team that I was very invested in like three seasons ago. They were so unique. They were so original. They have really had like two seasons where they have just fallen slowly behind. I'm pretty sure that the American Federation is going to try to push them here. But given the programs they have and where they are this season, I don't think they should be ahead of a lot of these teams. I would put them in the top six, but I wouldn't put them any further than that. And then we have our rising um, young Czech team who are now coming out of junior, making their way to see um, senior, um, Katarina Moskova and Danielle Mas Masek. This pair, I'm looking again for them for the future. They are slowly building who they are. They have the skating skills. They have the Speed. They have the lines. The rhythm dance, I really like. The free dance has some really interesting moments, but I don't think like they're, they had the Flamengo program a couple of seasons ago where she was flinging that skirt. I feel like that's more along the dramatic, passionate type of free dance is what I want them to see, not necessarily the Black Swan Balletic program. I mean, it's not a bad program for them. I just don't necessarily love it. But I would also see them in my top six. And then finally, we get to the women. Ah, uh, again, that's how I would like to see this play and how it's going to play. In my ideal world, Hana Yoshida would win this. Mone Shiba would win the silver. And Luna Hendricks would win the Bronx. Why? Because Hana Yoshida has beautiful jumps. Beautiful ice coverage. Nice extension. Good packaging. So for me, she would be first. Mona Shiba, I know. She had the most horrendous start to her season ever. But she's so musical. She's so in tune with her movement, her Edges are so sharp. They're so deep. She lands so beautifully. If she could skate clean, I'd give her the silver, no question asked. And then Luna Hendricks, her, 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 her long program is completely empty. But her jumps look so good for where she is at at the season. If she could do her jumps the same way she did them at the Japan Open, I would put her on the podium. This is what I would like to see happen. What I believe is going to happen, Luna Hendricks is going to win this. Um, I think it, the judges really want to push Luna. They want to push Luna or Isabel, but I feel like Luna Hendricks is an easier push than Isabel right now. So for me, I think if Luna can come here, with a decent short program. She does the empty long program, but she lands enough of her jumps. I think the judges will give her this title. And second place, I think they're going to give it to Isabel Levito. I feel like U.S. figure skating is going to push for Isabel to win this. But I feel like the judges are greedy, not stupid. They already understand because they've had 10 years of empirical proof that the technique that Isabeau is using, the Iteri technique, that it does not work. So they're not going to put their all behind Isabeau. And if eventually that technique starts to fail her, they're going to once again look foolish. And they've already been looking foolish for a decade now. So I feel like as greedy as they are, they're eventually learning from their mistake. So I think as much as U.S. figure skating might want to push Isabel, I don't think the judges are going to go with her unless everybody else completely falls short. So I'm going to put Isabel in, in second place. Yeah, I'm going to give her the silver medal. Um, I'm not going to hop about her jumping. I'll do that after we see the program. I'm going to put Hannah Yoshida, your first in my heart, but I feel like the judges are going to put you in third place. So that's where you are. You have the bronze medal for me. I think Amber Glenn is going to be in fourth. She's going to come here. She's going to have a good short program. She's going to get us all excited. Yes, this is finally the season of Amber. And then she's going to have an Amber Glenn-like 
free program and we're going to be like, okay, it's more of the same. I going to put in fifth place Ekaterina Karakova. Listen, Ekaterina is working on that triple triple in the short program. She has her eyes set on a medal at European. She is coming. If she can get that triple triple, even if it's a triple toe, triple toe in the short program, she's charismatic. She's likable. She's engaging. The judges like her. I feel like if the other skaters don't show up, Ekaterina can easily sneak in there and get herself a bronze medal. But for right now, I have her in fifth place. Then we have Yu Young. Again, Yu Young is slowly rebuilding. She only has a triple double right now, but she's slowly rebuilding. The more she competes, she'll get back her confidence. She'll get back her jumps. It might not happen this season, but again, we're thinking about long run. We're thinking about the next Olympic cycle. But for now, I don't see the judges pushing her until she's completely back at her original levels in terms of jumps. Um, then, you know, the rest of the skaters, we have like Nana um, Kawabi, a very inconsistent skater, but that has brilliant moments. If she could add all those brilliant moments together and other skaters falter, she can possibly get a bronze medal here. Mone Shiba. Love Mone, love Mone. Such a complete skater, but she does not have probably the mentality to compete at such a high level yet. And so the nerves are getting to her. It's not that she doesn't have the skill or the talent, but you have to have the mind frame of a competitor. And I just don't feel like she's there yet. And so this, this season might be a little bit of a growing pain for her. But again, if she can deliver to clean program and the other skaters falter, she could easily end up on the podium. Um, then we have um, Zion and Nini. Nini had a really, really bad showing at the Shanghai um, Trophy. Again, it's so difficult to compete on home ice. I'm hoping that she can shake that off and come here and show that she deserves to be in this competitive field with all the other lady skaters because her spins are incredible. Her musicality, her flexibility, the jumps, oh my God, they are so questionable. Even Stevie Wonder can see her under rotation. But the rest of it, there's potential there and I want her to be able to show it. I don't think there's any chance of her getting on the podium, but she could do as good as a sixth place finish. And then lastly, we have um, Si Young Wee. This skater has beautiful jumps, but again, the mindset to compete and deliver when it counts is something she struggles with. So I don't know what kind of version of her we're going to see here. Is she going to be the fighter that's going to come out and deliver her jumps, or is she going to fall apart? But again, she could easily do a top six finish here, depending on how she performed. But we have to wait and see. I think Skate America is incredibly competitive for the ladies. I would not have picked Skate America as a Grand Prix if I was competing because this is a very competitive deal and any of these ladies have potential and could end up on top and we just have to wait and see. But this is my prediction for Skate America. But again, guys, you know it's figure skating. There is no guarantee I leave it all to the skating gods. But what about you guys? What are your predictions for Skate America?